I'd now like to uh, call up our final uh, panelist, uh, Abdelaziz Al Hamza, please. Hello, thank you for coming today. So, my name is Abdelaziz Al Hamza. I'm a journalist, human rights activist, and defender. I came from Syria, from a small city called Raqqa. In March 2011, the Syrian revolution started against the Syrian regime. I was like one of the people who hit the street asking and calling for freedom, as many Syrians. We didn't ask for anything else, but the way how the Syrian regime reacted by killing people and arresting them pushed me like, to be more involved in, this, in the Syrian uprising. I decided like, to do something. I was like watching protests all over the country and hearing the news. And when I was like going back to my house, watching the TV, the media was talking about nothing. The local TV would talk about what would happen to, what would happen to the earth if the sun would disappear, while many, while many Syrians were be, will be killing. So I decided to do something. The next day, I went to the street with my old Nokia phone. I started to record like the protest. I went back home, I uploaded the video, and I noticed that my video went wild. Like many like uh, TV channels, like newspaper and publications started to talk about it. In that moment, I believed in something called the citizen journalism. And I started to use that as a way to tell, the, to tell the world about what's going on in Syria, about the atrocities that has been committed by the Syrian regime. And that was like a reason for the Syrian government, for the Syrian regime to arrest me. I got arrested three times, I got tortured, but I was lucky enough to be released, unlike many of my fellow Syrians, who've been killed under torture who've been killed in several ways by Assad regime. We are the Syrian people. We are like the people who've been killed by like rockets, by barrel bombs, by attacks, by chemical weapons. On the watch of the international community, on the watch of the UN, on the watch of everyone, and no one could do anything. They were all watching like a dictator killing his own people and they couldn't do anything. Later on, Later on, another group rised up in my city. My city called Raqqa, which is in northeast Syria. It's a forgotten city until recently when a group called ISIS came in. So they came into the city, they controlled everything, they changed every single small thing in the city. I wasn't expected to have this kind of a groups in my country. I was like watching them like on the TV and never ever thought that that would be something I would witness in my life. Later on this a group, so, uh, later on I witnessed like the first like public execution. I was like walking in the street, I've seen like the first public execution. ISIS killed like three people without mentioning the reason, without mentioning why, and without mentioning who they are. At that moment, people hit the street. They started to protest against ISIS as they did against the Assad regime. But later on, when ISIS controlled all over the city, I was forced to leave because I couldn't stay there anymore as ISIS tried to arrest me coming to my parents' house. I was lucky enough not to be there for the second time, unlike many others who've been arrested, tortured, and killed, kidnapped, and many, and right now there are like many prisoners were arrested by ISIS, their families are waiting for, a, for, waiting for like a word or like a piece of information about them and they haven't received any. I got to Turkey where my friends and I decided to do something. As we started our struggle against the Syrian regime, we decided to do something against ISIS. We started an organization I co-founded, it's called Rakas Being Slaughtered Silently, RBSS, which is like a non-partisan independent organization which exposed the crimes of ISIS and As Assad regime and other groups. So we decided that we would keep reporting, we would keep telling the truth. While many journalists and media organizations couldn't get like to the to ISIS territories, we decided to be like we decided to be like the journalists, we decided to be like the media, we decided to be like the voice of, of Raqqa people or like and the voice of the Syrians who lives under ISIS territories. 
So we started our reporting. We started like in a normal, we, we started like w w working in two teams. The first team in Raqqa and Syria, sending in news for the second team, which is based outside. So we started by reporting in news, sending photos and videos out of the city. And then we noticed that we were able to make a change with the media. The media haven't heard about ISIS back that time. We got the attention of the media. We started many campaigns. We decided to stop the recruitment machine of ISIS. And since we started, the number of people who were joining ISIS started to go less and less. We did many campaigns, like one of them called the other side, to show like the propaganda of ISIS, showing them like eating in a fancy restaurant and calling Raqqa and their territories a heaven while local people were like so starving, waiting in lines to get some food. We did like many other online campaigns. We decided to do like also some resistance movement. We went to the street of the most to the most uh, dangerous strongholds of ISIS. We tagged the walls with the graffiti, graffiti like against Assad and ISIS. Recently, we uh, and later on, we came up with a magazine. Our magazine had like the same cover of ISIS magazine. So, so that was like the easiest, the easiest way to reach out like the biggest number of locals in the in the country. So we would distribute like our magazine, which would which would have like a completely different context than ISIS magazine. So, but that was like a way to keep people safe. So in case they would be stopped by any ISIS fighters, they would say that we thought it's your own magazine. So it was like a way to send messages to the locals themselves. So while we were like sending information out, it was so important to send information inside. So, Assad and ISIS, they are like not the only forces who are responsible about the death of Syrians. Recently, ISIS has been defeated from, uh, from Syria, as it was announced in all over the media. But for us, we believe that ISIS is not a military group only a military group or a militia. ISIS is an ideology, and we've seen ISIS everywhere with the attacks. ISIS were able to recruit people all over. And for us, we believe that fighting the ideology can't be with bombs, can't be with airstrikes. So if we need like to fight an ideology, we need to fight it with an idea. So that's what we do. So we do like many campaigns in Raqqa right now, like to talk and work with like people who lived like under ISIS control. At the same time, we address like other forces, atrocities in Syria. I would start like, I would start and mention like many governments and countries, but I would not be able like to mention all of them. I would say Russia was responsible, the Russian government has been responsible about the death of thousands of Syrians. Uh, the Iranian militias has been responsible as well. Hezbollah, many militias backed by Turkey was also responsible about the death of many Syrians. And, uh, and I would mention also like th m recently like the International Coalition, which is led by the US and back and, uh, and SDF militia. They also been responsible about the death of thousands of Syrians. So the past two years, the, the number of Syrians who've been killed by the International Coalition, by the international community, it's, more, it's way more than the number of Syrians who've been killed by ISIS. It's like a fact that many of you might, don't, might not know about it. So it's so important to address that there are like, there are like tens of governments, like hundreds of groups and militias are, are involved of the death of many Syrians. So I'm here standing and calling on you, if you are like a politician, if you are like people in power, to help like the Syrian people. So just spread the words. And each of you who are like an individual, don't say that you can't do anything. Each of you is an activist. With my old Nokia phone, I could like record the protest and it went wild. So each of you have a phone, so you can tweet, you can write. And today we, we stand like for different causes. So the cause of from runway, the free girls. So I would ask you, if you have a phone, you would give Give your, get your phone out and go and go to Twitter and check the hashtag free girls. So your tweet might make like a difference and might make a change. Thank you very much.